one, you must really want to hear what's being said. If you're talking to me and I'm, you know, busy checking my date book, that's not going to let you know that I care about what you have to say. You must also want to be helpful, and this will show in your response. You communicate something to me, and if I want to be helpful, you'll hear that in my voice in the way I listen to what you say. Thirdly, you must be able to accept feelings. We may not feel the same way about something, but as a listener, it's important that I put my feelings aside because what's important in listening is what you're conveying. Number four is believe that that person has the capacity to handle their problem. I'm not going to jump in and give you solutions or jump in and give you my experience because it's your issue and I'm the listener in this role. One good thing, number five, is that feelings are not permanent. And I think the best example is disasters in our life where we're sure the world is going to end and we can't believe, you know, how unjust life is to us. But then years later, we're able to express it, and it's funny, and we laugh about it. So that's the good thing, that feelings can change. They're not permanent. Number six is accept that it's very difficult to listen when you're talking. There's no way you're going to believe that I'm caring about what you have to say if I keep interrupting and giving you my viewpoint. And lastly, it's important to listen, to understand, and not to reply. I can't be thinking of what I want to say, how I want to interject my experience. I have to listen to understand. So questions I ask are going to open up a better understanding of the communication that's taken place. Now we're going to look at three scenarios. The first is Betty is going to be going to Kathy. She has a trip plan and she needs to verify and make sure that she's got that time off. Kathy isn't using the best of listening skills. In fact, she seems to be pretty preoccupied with something else. But let's take a look at what that looks like. Hi, Betty. Did you want to talk to me about something? Yes, Kathy. I put in my uh, six months request because you know I'm going to Port of Ida and I have to. Kathy? Yeah, I'm listening, Betty. I'm just getting a pen. Because I have my tickets, my air flight, and everything is all set, but I need the okay from you because I have to have somebody to replace me. And I put it in, Kathy. Yeah, I'm just, I'm getting it, Betty. I got it all. Just keep going. I'm, I hear you. Because we got to go down to the International Airport in Laquita, Illinois, to, to book Kathy. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Betty. Go ahead. I, I'm just trying to get it. I'm getting it all down. Okay, because I have to let my husband and my kids know because he's got his time off, and I don't have mine off, Kathy. But, Kathy, I don't think you're listening to me. I I'm listening to you. Well, Kathy, I have not got a reply, and I need a reply, Kathy. Because I'm going to have to have a reply soon. If I don't, I'm going to have to take the trip anyway, Kathy. And then I don't want to be in trouble when I get back. Kathy, you're not listening to me. Now, it's quite obvious that Betty knew Kathy wasn't listening to her. She didn't get an answer, and Betty was pretty frustrated at the end. Now we're going to look at Kathy being anxious to give her opinion, and you can see how this affects the communication. Hi, Betty. Come on in. Uh, is there something that you wanted to talk to me about? Yes, Kathy. I need some time off. I'm going to Puerto Vallarta. Oh, I went to Puerto Vallarta. Oh, I loved it. Oh, the kid. Oh, there's so many kids there, and they want to give you. They want. But Kathy. I need to reply right away because I have to get back to Marge, my travel agent. She's got to let me know. I've used her before. She is really good. She is one of the best travel agents. She'll make sure she takes care of you. But, Kathy, what I came in here to talk to you about is that did you okay the days off? You know, it, it's, it's really it's getting kind of close. When are you leaving? I'm leaving. But, Kathy, wait a minute. Um, I need those days off. I need a reply, Kathy. Because I'm going to be leaving on the 16th. Oh, how are you leaving? Are you going through Chicago? Yes, I'm going through Chicago, Kathy. Oh, I but, love O'Hare Airport. But, that is the best airport. The but, flights are always on time. Oh, but that Kathy, is a great airport. I still need you to give me a reply. I can't fly to the uh, Port of Ottawa unless you You know, you give the me last time I flew, we were, we were delayed when we were leaving out of Atlanta. So they put us up in a hotel. Oh, it was so nice. And it was all paid for. Kathy. Do I have the days off? 
In this case, I think Betty was doing as much listening as Kathy was. She was so eager to get her opinion in. And again, Betty still doesn't have an answer to her question. The last example we're going to look at is Kathy showing that she's an active listener, that she has those traits of wanting to understand what's being said and being helpful. And this time I think Betty's going to get her answer. Let's look. Hi, Betty. You wanted to see me about a scheduling problem? Yes, uh, Kathy. I had put in a request six months ago because I'm going to Puerto Vallarta between the 16th and 23rd, and I haven't had a reply yet. So you said that you put it in six months ago, um, and you, you did put down the dates the 16th through the 23rd? Yes, I would like to know, is it okay? Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do some checking, and I can get back to you sometime today to let you know for sure whether or not that's going to be okay. That's great, Kathy. Thank you. I don't know about you, but I'm glad Betty's finally going to find out that she can take that vacation. In summary, we've covered the pieces that make up communication. We've covered the types of communication. We've covered four different communication styles that you'll be coming in contact with. And you've gotten some real good tips on listening. Now, I think it's important that you review this tape, you listen to it again, you talk about it with your coworkers, with your family, and try some of these techniques out. If you master the skill of communication, you'll have discovered the key to a satisfying and productive relationship with your friends, at home, and in your workplace.